not easy alim learning simplified my name is ruth and today we are going to be looking at a topic sulfur and its compounds and for today we are going just to be focusing on the paper three bits of this topic which we are going to look at the test of sulfates and sulfites and then uh, this is like going to form the basis of the conclusion of this topic it's going to be the last bit of this topic so it's important to see how these tests are done and so that when we come to the paper three bits later on you are able to see how we can integrate this theoretical knowledge in the laboratory so sulfate and sulfite so sulfate uh, which is written as so4 with a um, charge of two minus are normal and acid salts derived from sulfuric six acid so we start with the sulfate and sulfide, which is SO3 with a charge of 2 minus, is derived, derived from sulfuric 4 acid or sulfurous acid. So you can see where they come from. And sulfuric uh, 6 acid is formed when sulfuric, sulfur 6 oxide is bubbled in water. So you can see the sulfuric 6 acid we know comes from sulfuric 6 oxide. And then the sulfurous acid comes from sulfur 4 oxide bubbling, reacting with water. So the, the acid exists as a diabetic acid with two ionizable hydrogen. So it therefore forms the sulfate ion and the hydrogen sulfide salts. So it forms sulfate salts and hydrogen sulfate salts. So when you look at sulfuric six acid, when it dissociates, it forms uh, two hydrogen ions and sulfate ions, but in some situation where it can react with other are compounds to form hydrogen sulfide so it's it dissociates partially although we know it dissociates fully so those metal ion can only partially remove the hydrogen ions so it forms hydrogen ions and hydrogen sulfide so sulfuric 4 acid on the other hand is formed when sulfur 4 oxide is bubbled in water so it's also referred to as sulfurous acid. It ex also exists as a diabetic acid with two ionizable hydrogen. So it can also form sulfites and hydrogen sulfites. So you can see when it dissociates fully, it forms two hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. But sometimes when the ion, the metal is not able to remove the hydrogen fully, so it dissociates to form one hydrogen ions and hydrogen sulfite ions. So notice the word is sulfate and sulfite because of the number of oxygen um, atoms present. So all sulfates usually dissolve in water and are soluble except uh, calcium sulfate, barium sulfate, lead sulfate. So it is important to remember this. It forms also part of the qualitative analysis. We mentioned this in salt in form 2. So we said that sulfates are soluble, but we have three exceptions. And it's calcium, barium, and lead sulfate. And calcium sulfate is slightly soluble. And then sulfites also, all of them dissolve in water except the three as again calcium sulfate, barium sulfate, and lead sulfate. And then all hydrogen sulfates exist in solution when dissolved in water. So sodium hydrogen sulfate, potassium hydrogen sulfate, and ammonium hydrogen sulfate also exist as solid. So you can see these exception ones, the sodium, potassium, and ammonium hydrogen sulfate are the only ones that exist in as solids, but others exist as solutions. So other hydrogen sulfates uh, salt do not exist except those of calcium hydrogen sulfate and magnesium hydrogen sulfate. So basically we have potassium hydrogen sulfate, sodium hydrogen sulfate, ammonium hydrogen sulfate, calcium hydrogen sulfate, and a magnesium hydrogen sulfate. All other ones do not exist. So for sulfites, they're the ones that have uh, sulfite ions and a metallic or uh, ammonium cation so if you heat them they usually form sulfur 4 oxide so for example if you heat copper sulfite remember it's it it decomposes to form copper 2 oxide and sulfur 4 oxide so let's look at now test for sulfites so we are going to add um, uh, barium chloride to the test solution 
So you notice when we are testing for sulfates and sulfides, we shall use barium chloride or barium nitrate. These two are alternative. This is because this barium chloride and barium nitrate are soluble sorts of barium. So the, the, their purpose is just to produce the barium ions. It's like to produce these barium ions that will take part in the reaction. So, and then after the, they're added to the mixture, we add hydrochloric acid or nitric acid. So these two acids as well are used because they form also soluble uh, salts. So remember we are adding the chloride first or nitrate and then we follow it with the acid. So we will get to know what happens after that. So if you add barium chloride or barium nitrate and it forms a white precipitate that dissolves on addition of acid, then we know that what we have tested for this case is sulfate ions. So production of a colorless gas that turns a uh, filter paper soaked in acidified potassium dichromate 6 will change from orange to green. So this tells us the, the gas that is being produced is sulfur 4 oxide. But if you were to write the inference in paper 3, we would just see its presence of sulfide ions. So I hope you have understood that. So you add barium chloride and then followed by uh, hydrochloric acid. So when you add barium chloride, it forms a white precipitate. So this precipitate dissolves when the acid is added. That tells you that it is the sulfide ions that are being in the, that are in the solution. So barium sulfate, barium carbonate, uh, and barium sulfate usually forms white precipitate. But the precipitates of sulfite and carbonate are usually soluble in acids, like for the sulfate. So the barium sulfide produces sulfur 4 oxide as it dissolves on addition of the acid. That sulfur 4 oxide is the one that turns acidified potassium dichromate 6 from orange to green. Uh, barium carbonate, on the other hand, if we had barium carbonate ions in solution, it would form carbon 4 oxide, which would not affect the dichromate, but it would turn the lime water into a white precipitate. So the first thing that is happening in the reaction, the first thing when you add the barium chloride or barium nitrate, the barium ions would react to the sulfate ions in the solution to form a white precipitate. Then on addition of the acid, now barium sulfate reacts with hydrochloric acid and the solution dissolves. It forms a colorless solution because there is production of uh, sulfur four oxide in water. I hope you've been able to understand the two steps. So for sulfides, uh, we, sulfates, sorry, we are going to use the same also uh, process. So sulfates are usually uh, compounds containing uh, their, their SO4. Um, and if you heat them, they usually decompose to give sulfur 4 oxide or sulfur 6 oxide a mixture, or it can give sulfur 6 oxide on its own. So, however, a quite number of sulfates do not decompose on heating, thus they require very strong heating in order for them to decompose. So, for example, you can see if you heat iron 2 sulfate, you form iron 3 oxide. This is a very common question on action of heat on sulfate, and it forms a mixture of sulfur 4 oxide and sulfur 6 oxide. But if you heat copper sulfate on its own, it just gives you sulfur 6 oxide and the oxide itself. So how do we test for sulfates? It's the same, same procedure. We are going to add the test, so we take the test solution, we add two centimeters or cubed of either barium chloride or barium nitrate. We said the purpose of this is to introduce the barium ions in solution. And then we follow it with hydrochloric acid or nitric acid. So in this case, it's going to be different because our white precipitate is formed first when we add the chloride, but when you add the acid, it does not dissolve. It is insoluble in excess acid. So the reason why this is possible is because we know, yes, the carbonate, sulfate, and sulfate ions forms white precipitates. But for the barium sulfate and carbonate, we see that they are soluble. They, they, are, they form gases when they react to the acid, so they, they dissolve to form colorless solution. But... Um, for sulfate, when the white precipitate is added to 
uh, the nitric acid is added to the white precipitate of sulfate, it doesn't dissolve. This is because the first step, we know that the barium ions react with the sulfate ions in the solution to form the white precipitate, which is the same with the previous experiment. But the difference is when the acid is added now, the white precipitate does not dissolve in this case. This is because the sulfate ions do not like react with the hydrochloric acid. So also sulfur compounds uh, pollute the environment and the main pollution is sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. Uh, sulfur dioxide is emitted when fuels are burnt and these are the fuels that contain sulfur in them. And also in the manufacture of sulfuric acid, we said also sulfur dioxide can be given off. So sulfur dioxide is then oxidized to sulfur six oxide, which reacts with moisture in the air to form sulfuric six acid. Sulfuric six acid is the one that causes now environmental effects like leaching of minerals, erosion of wax like buildings, erosion of metallic structures. Um, sorry. Um, it also causes irritation of the respiratory system. It causes the death of plants as a result of uh, defoliation. It causes destruction of aquatic life and it causes stunted growth in plants. So hydrogen sulfide on its own is very also poisonous. We said it has the same toxicity with hydrogen cyanide, which is really, really toxic. So we were going to look at one qualitative experiment and then bring come to an end of this session. So to about five centimeters cubed of a salt solution in a test tube, this is the test solution, add four drops of barium nitrate or chloride and preserve. So the first observation we notice when we add is a white precipitate is formed. You can see how we write our observations. I know you'll get a time to look at the details of qualitative analysis, but this forms part of it. So the observation is what is we are going to see. So a white precipitate is formed, and then there is something we call inferring. Inferring is telling us like what are the ions or cations we think that are in that solution from the observations you have noted. So in this case, the moment it forms a white precipitate, we know that we have sulfate sulfites and carbonate. This is just the first part of it. And then to this uh, sample in above, we add nitric acid and we preserve. So the moment we add nitric acid and the white precipitate persists, it tells us that it is sulfate ion. If you were to add nitric acid and the white precipitate dissolves, then that tells you that it is sulfate and carbonate ions. I hope you can see the difference between the two tests. If the precipitate persists, sulfate. If it dissolves, it's sulfate and carbonate ions. So after that, from this previous experiment that dissolved from observation two, we added uh, four drops of acidified potassium permanganate. If acidified potassium permanganate decolorizes and the orange uh, potassium dichromate turns to green, it tells us that it's sulfate ions. Why? Because this production of sulfur dioxide, which does this reaction. So we don't we don't infer the gas, we infer where the gas is in. It is in the sulfide ions. That's where the gas, so we don't infer the gas. As you can see, we are inferring the presence of sulfide ions. So if the other opposite happened, like the acidified potassium permanganate did not decolorize and the orange color of potassium dichromate not turn to green, it tells you like it's carbonate ions. Remember, we are in we are getting these observations from where it dissolved. That's where we are starting from. So it dissolves to form a colorless gas, but that colorless gas can either decolorize or not decolorize. If it decolorizes, it's sulfur dioxide being given off. That tells you it's sulfite ions. If it doesn't decolorize, it means there's still a gas being produced, yes, but this gas is not sulfur dioxide, so it tells us the gas that is, is carbon dioxide. So it tells us that it's a carbonate ion. I hope you have been able to understand. So that's how we test that this was just a sample of a dry practical. We are going to look at more later on as we get to form for work. So that's it for today. Uh, see you in the next lesson as we start on chlorine and its compounds.